You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on kinematics. The topic of this video is using the kinematic equations to solve problems. This is the second video on this topic. We have one question to answer, and it's how do you use the four kinematic equations to solve physics word problems? Let's get started. In previous videos of this series, we've talked about the four kinematic equations. The way that I write them is shown here but other sources may use different symbols for the variables than I've used. For instance, sometimes displacement, or overall change in position, is represented by a delta x. The first equation kind of uses that idea and rewrites it as x, the final position, is equal to the original position plus v original times t plus 1 half at squared. The, other, the next two equations are sometimes rewritten as well with delta x in place of d, displacement. Then there's the idea of time. I write it with a t. Other sources may write it with a delta t, meaning the time over which the motion takes place. And finally, I use v subscripted o for v original velocity. Other sources may use v initial or vi. What you have to decide is what you're most comfortable with, but these are the symbols that I'll be using as I approach the problems and solve them using the big four. As you begin to use the four kinematic equations to solve problems, your strategy is going to center around the idea that each equation contains four different variables. So if you know the value of three variables, you can solve for the fourth variable in the equation. So what you'll do when you have a sample problem like this one is you'll look for numbers and equate them with the various symbols of the equations. For instance, I see that there's an 18.5 meter per second and a 46.1 meter per second. This is the original and the final velocity. And I also see that the time is 2.47 seconds. So I'll write down what I know. I know v original, v final, and I know t. And what I'm looking for is the distance. So what I will do is scan through the different equations until I find the one equation that contains these four variables, then I will substitute known values in and solve for the unknown. And that's the basic strategy that we will be using today as we look to solve problems using the big four. This is example one, and you'll notice on the right side of the slide is a five steps problem solving strategy that we're going to use. And the first step is to read the problem carefully and identify the known values of three variables. So Lisa Ford accelerates from 12 meters per second to 26 meters per second at a rate of 4.2 meters per second squared. There's our three values. Now you have to relate them to the symbols in the kinematic equations. So the 12, the 26 are both velocities. We know that by the unit. The original velocity is 12 and it accelerates to a final velocity of 26. And the 4.2 is the acceleration rate. We know that because of the units. So we write that down. The second step of the equation is to identify the unknown. The problem continues and says, over what distance does this acceleration occur? So I'm going to write down the unknown. It's the distance. I write it in simple form. Now what I'm going to do is find a kinematic equation to use that has in it v original, v final, a, and d. So here are the four equations. I'm looking for the ones with those four variables that are in my problem. It ends up being the second equation in the list. So what I'm going to do is write that equation down. There it is. Step four is to take the three known values and substitute them into this equation, and then to perform some algebra in order to solve for the unknown. So here's my substituted values. Now in terms of the algebra that I'll do is I'm going to have to isolate the d term by itself on the right side of the equation. That is, I'm going to have to get the 12 squared off of the right side of the equation. So I subtract 12 squared from each side. The left side becomes 26 squared minus 12 squared, and the right side simplifies to 8.4d. Then I divide both sides through by 8.4, and I solve for d, the displacement or the distance traveled. It ends up being 63 meters when rounded to two significant digits. That's how you use this five-step strategy to solve a problem like that. Let's try another one. This is example two. I'm going to read the problem and look for three known variables and relate them to the symbols. Ed Foot is traveling at 38.2 meters per second. That's a velocity, an original velocity. He spots the state police, so he decelerates at 8.6 meters per second squared for 2.1 seconds. That's an acceleration value, but since it's a deceleration, I'm going to call it negative 8.6 meters per second squared. And the 2.1 seconds 
Well, that's the time. So I take these three values and I write them down and equate them to the symbols within my four kinematic equations. Now I'm going to look for the unknown value. It says, what distance does he travel during this 2.1 seconds of time? So the unknown is distance. I'm going to write that down as d equal question mark. Now I have three known values and one unknown values. That's four variable symbols in all. I'm going to look through my list of equations. Here they are for the one that has VO, A, T, and D. And that ends up being the first equation in the list. I'm going to write this equation down. And then step four, I'm going to substitute these three known values into it. And then I'm going to perform some algebra and calculations to solve for the unknown. The, cal the algebra here is rather simple. I'm just going to multiply and add two terms together. And then when I'm done, I get 61 meters as the distance traveled during this 2.1 second of time. This is our third and final example. What is the acceleration of a car that breaks from 24.2 meters per second to 11.9 meters per second in 2.85 seconds? There's the three values. Now the first one, the 24.2 meters per second, is an original velocity. That's V subscript O. And the 11.9 meters per second, that's a final velocity. That's V subscript F. And the 2.85 seconds, why well, that's the time. So I write these three known values down, and I relate them to the symbols in the four kinematic equations. Now it says, what's the acceleration of this car? So the unknown value is the acceleration. I write that down as A equal question mark. Now you see there are three symbols for whose, value, who, who, whose variable values I know, and one that I don't. So I'm going to look for the one equation that has these four variables in it. And when I scan my list looking for V original, V F, T, and A in the single equation, the only one for which that is true is the last equation. So I'm going to take that last equation, I'm going to write it down, there you see it, and I'm going to take known values of V O, V F, and T and substitute it into the equation. There's my substitution. Now I want to do, perform some algebra and solve for A. As far as the algebra goes, that involves isolating the A term, the acceleration term by itself on the right side of the equation. So I have to subtract 24.2 meters per second from each side. The left side would become 11.9 minus 24.2. That ends up being a negative value. And the right side is positive 2.85 times A. Now when I divide through each side by 2.85, I end up getting my acceleration answer. And it is negative 4.32 meters per second squared. Why is there a negative value? value because that indicates a slowing down motion here for an object that has a positive velocity. So this object is decelerating or slowing down. This illustrates how you use the big four and this problem solving strategy to solve for an unknown variable value. Well, we've done it. We figured out how to use the four kinematic equations to solve a physics word problem. It's at this time in every video that I like to give you an action plan, a way of making the learning stick, a series of next steps that's going to further your learning. But before I help you out with that action plan, I was wondering if I could ask you to help us out. First, if you like the video, maybe you can press the like button down below. And if you like the video, why don't you also hit subscribe and get notifications from our channel whenever a new video comes out, which is going to be quite often here in the next few months. And then finally, if you have a question or comment, why don't you leave them down below? Okay, now for the action plan. First thing I'd like to suggest you do is you head off to our website and you look for the calculator pad section. You'll see it there on the home page and once you go there look for the kinematic section and if you, you, you should see 35 problems there and the last 18 or so, 17, 18 problems are all about using kinematic equations to solve problems. What you get in the calculator pad is you get a problem and you get an answer and you get an audio guided solution. It's great practice. You might want to try it to further your learning. The second idea is you could go to our website and you should see their review session. Typically students use that to review for quizzes and tests, but you can use it for anything you want, like to practice kinematic equations. If you go to the kinematic section, you'll notice that questions 43 through 50 all have to do with the use of kinematic equations to solve problems. What you're going to get in the review session is a problem, an answer, and a, and a uh, very thoroughly written out solution to that problem. Finally, the last thing you might want to do is you might want to check out our tutorial section. The tutorial section is kind of like our written textbook. Um, if you need a quick reference, you need to, to see something that's readable and reliable, check out the Physics Classroom tutorial. Well, thanks for joining us here on the Physics Classroom video tutorial series on kinematics. I wish you the best of luck.